Okay, party people. It's DK with Mr. V Amps, and I have a smattering of pedals in front of me. Well, everything that will fit on this given surface. And yes, I am self-promoting. I have a lot of Mr. V pedals here, like the Mystic Toad Tremolo, which also has a booster. And the Howling Stag Overdrive, natural tube sounding overdrive, it's great. But no, it is all solid state. But if you want a real tube overdrive, check out the Adversary. And, of course, the angriest distortion pedal ever created, Karen. Okay, that's enough self-promotion. I have been getting a smattering of broken pedals lately, and I can't find a dang thing wrong with them, other than, you know, maybe an occasional ground. And it seems like 97% of the time, the problem is with powering these things. Okay? So... It's very popular to go to Guitar Mart and ask for, oh, I want one of them power supplies to power all my pedals. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's got a wall wart, and then you got, you know, a daisy chain of little plugs, right? Well, those things, you got to understand current draw to understand if that's going to work for you or if you're going to have a holy nightmare on your hands. We all understand 9 volts. For most of these. Not all of them are 9 volts, actually. In in the case of this, I got some weird ones here on purpose. 9 volts is fine. We understand 9 volts. But what we don't think about is necessarily the current. Okay? And most of those popular, and again, we're not going to name any names, most of those popular one plug, multiple pedal power supply things are capable of putting out 1000 milliamps, that's one amp, and it's a switch mode power supply. And I think that they're probably generously saying 1000 milliamps, because once they start to get close to that limit, they start making weird noise, and they get warm, and they might fail, you know, not, not good, not good. So, most of your pedals, your typical solid state distortions, and that kind of stuff. These aren't going to have a huge current draw and many times the manufacturer will write down on the bottom at least something to tell you about the current draw. But if you notice, most of them don't. I'll just tell you, 9 volt pin negative. 9 volt pin negative is very very common. It's kind of the generic de facto power supply for a boss type pedal and the one we use for testing most of the things around here is an old Dunlop unit. And this is capable of putting out 200 milliamps at 9 volts. And it gives a nice, steady, smooth, linear power. They don't make this anymore. Of course they don't. They switch to switch mode because it's allegedly better for the environment. Oh well. Anyway, the key thing is, I said this is a 200 milliamp power supply, right? It can supply 200 milliamps. That should be able to power most of these pedals just fine, right? Right? Well, two of these pedals might appear broken, like this Sabine NEX. 5300 stereo chorus because it is looking for 9 volts pin negative at 300 milliamps and it's capable of anywhere between an 8 and 16 volt power adapter. So this particular pedal would cause my trusty Dunlop power adapter there to cry for mercy and the pedal would probably switch itself off and wouldn't work. We got a Morley volume pedal here. That one's looking for 300 milliamps also. Now is that necessarily the actual current draw of the item? Eh, maybe, maybe not. But some pedals draw more than others and you gotta be aware of that. And I've even got some here that are tube monsters, like this Maxon. That's got a tube in it. Kind of cool. 
this one just tells you what power adapter to use with it. A 9 or a 10 volt power adapter and actually the OEM power adapter in here is 200 milliamps and that is actually kind of on the low side because the filament on these tubes is going to draw 150 milliamps on its own. A 12AX7 will draw between 150 and let's see, yeah, it's it's in amps. They give it in amps, so it'd be 0.15 amps or point up to 0.3 amps is what they can draw in parallel. So that would be 150 to 300 milliamps that that tube could be drawing. So I'm assuming it's whoever rated this is assuming the tube is going to draw 150 milliamps and then the other 50 milliamps in that power supply is going to deal with the other electronic bits in there and it seems to work just fine again that's a pin negative we have some of these other oddballs like a Gaia tone use a, a, a 12 volt power adapter 12 volt well yes these are also two based and if you think about it, it's probably better for this considering it's a 12 AX7. So the 12 AX7 is going to want a 12 volt power supply to power it. Unless you're going to try to run it on 6.3. And they ship a 200 milliamp power adapter with those. And then there's other pedals that just kind of make you scratch your head like this Leela switcher. These things are great, by the way. They still make some kind of version of this, but it just says somewhere between 8 and 20 volts. Well, it's only got to run LEDs and relays, and there's actually some regulation circuitry in there. So this one's not a big current draw, but I find it interesting that they give you that kind of range. Or you get some real weird ones, like this infamous little bear Chinese thing. Do they even make this anymore? I don't know. But this one, they say 9 to 12 volts AC or 12 to 18 volts in DC. Okay. And if it's DC, is should it be pin negative or pin positive? Did they tell you? No. Pin negative works on it, though. However, if you're experiencing weirdness in your pedal chain, it's probably because your current draw is on the high end. If you, for example, were to take one of those infamous one amp, the 1000 milliamp um, multi daisy chain adapters and hook up this one and that one, you would already be at 600 milliamps. Put, your, put one of these on here. Well, you're already tapping the limits. And the experience I had is I had one guy who had a a big box branded power supply actually a very expensive power supply and the outputs individually on it were something like 50 to 100 to 200 milliamps something like that and the moment the adversary was added to his device to power it his entire pedal board started crying like a baby because the power supply couldn't keep up with lighting up a tube. So we need to be aware of current draw. The other thing we need to be aware of that happens all the time is my pedal cuts out, my pedal turns off. It doesn't turn on. I plugged it into power and it won't turn on. Oh, good grief, people. Let me explain something to you. I have plugged the pedal in and it doesn't turn on. I can't get it to turn on at all. It's usually because you have to plug a cable into the input or the output. When I plug a cable into the input, now the pedal can turn on. Why is this? Why do they do this? And what the heck is the point of this? Well, a majority of pedals have the ability to run on a 9 volt battery. And if you would just leave them on, the battery would run dead. So the idea behind this whole thing is when you plug the cable in, it assumes you want to use them. And it also assumes that you're unplugging it when you're done. 
This is kind of going back to old school logic when we all used one or two pedals and pedals were uh, kind of a novelty as opposed to an entire genre of shoegaze music based on them. And that can also play into a nightmare scenario for some various folks here. And the type of jack in there is like a stereo jack, okay? And what they do to cut the power is if you look on my jack that I have here, the outer ring part here, this is going to connect to the back of the barrel here, right? That's going to connect to the barrel. And this would connect to the ring of a TRS jack if I was using a TRS jack. But the entire point is if we look, when we plug in our cable, there's our signal, right? Our ground is the ring sleeve back here. But this switch here is also touching this barrel for ground. So they hook, generally, one leg of the battery to the input jack or sometimes the output jack depending on who made your pedal. So therefore the pedal will get no battery power without the jack plugged in. It actually disconnects the battery electrically. So therefore if you use plugs and cables that are all janked up, messed up, dented, corroded, whatever, you'll see these guys all the time. They get no sound on their pedal board and then they're down their toes. And they're... Go ahead and clean up all your cables and blow, blow out all the dust rabbits that might be living in your jacks. It might help you get some more reliable signal through those. Okay, let's talk about electricity. This is a battery. Essentially, if you have one of those pedal chains that hooks all your pedals together, they're all running off the same battery. In the case of electricity, it wants to go from the negative to the positive. Correct? Yes, it does. And it's going to try to go through all of the various paths that it can go to. Go through. It will try to take the shortest path. How does this play into what we're talking about? Well, if you power your pedals with individual batteries, each individual pedal will have an individual battery where it's trying to go from negative to positive. But if you use a daisy chain style power supply, they're all running on the same battery. Okay, who cares? Now remember how we talked about the negative of your battery being connected through your input jack. So on all of these pedals the input jack has the negative of the battery there. Yeah, so who cares? Right? That's where we bump into some things. Old school style germanium fuzz pedals don't use the NPN type transistors. They use what's called a PNP type transistor. That means that the jacks and the ground is not negative. It's positive. It's a positive ground system. So if you perchance to have a germanium fuzz such as the Mr. V Mountain Haze, awesome, or an old school germanium fuzz face, or maybe a fuzz tone FZ something or other, and you're trying to hook it up to the same power adapter that is powering all of your other negative ground pedals, If I have positive voltage on my input and output jacks of my germanium fuzz pedal and I plug into any other pedal that has negative on the jacks, I've created an instant short circuit.
and all of my pedals will shut down. Therefore, it is highly recommended most pedals are pin negative. Old school germanium fuzzes are often pin positive. Therefore, if you wish to use this with the other pedals, power it with its own battery or its own special power supply that is pin positive. This is sold. It's generally sold as the fuzz face power supply and it will work because again, any individual wall wart is just like a battery. It's trying to go from the negative to the positive of the battery. If you're using a daisy chain, they're all on one battery. However, if you put that one on a separate battery, like a separate wall board, it'll be fine. Now because I'm a nerd, I make my own cables. I can make them in any length I want, and I like these little type of uh, jacks because they're short and flat. It doesn't really matter if they're 90 degree jacks or not. You can use whatever you want. This one I found in a box of junk. This is the kind of one that a lot of times they ship with a cable or with a uh, pedal. They're okay too, but a little thin. The other thing that they sell on the market that makes me want to scream and pull my hair out, what hair I have left for those of you who know me, haha, <laughs> that's a bald guy joke are these things, the bane of my existence. Ernie, what were you thinking? Take a look at your average boutique pedal. Most of us boutique pedal people and non-boutique pedal people. Hold on a second, let me see here. Oh yeah, here's another one that's not a boutique pedal. That's an MXR. On many of these, the sides of the enclosure are not perfectly linear. There's a slight angle. Therefore, if we start chaining our pedals together with these stupid adapters, it isn't going to lay flat. It makes a narrow smiley face. I don't know if you can see that, but I sure as heck can see that. Sorry, we have to move the Karen. And of course I've got a soft fuzzy cloth here, but uh, yeah, this is not good. And then on top of that, we're going to be stepping and stomping on these it's a great way to break your input jacks. These rigid connectors should not be part of the lexicon of crap that people are allowed to buy, in my humble opinion. However, they exist and I don't like them. So, what have we learned today? That I have too much crap here and that a power supply that you're going to use, if you want to use a chained power supply, you really got to make sure that the milliamps of your power supply and or the milliamps of your wall wart of choice are up to snuff for the pedal you're using. What's bonkers is this tube-based Maxon, its factory tube, its factory adapter is 200 milliamps and it does work fine. However, this 200 milliamp adapter wouldn't work on this Sabine Stereo Chorus or this Morley. They want more current than that. Actually, I think the Morley will run with less, but eh, it's beyond there. Also, pedals that have a higher current draw rating or want more current if you decide to run them on the battery, you're going to be changing that battery a lot more. So when you're selecting a power supply, you're going to see all kinds of cool stuff from 
China, or, well, probably China, or China, or an American manufacturer that went to China. Um, and they have, they talk about what they call isolated, isolated uh, jacks, power jacks. Those can be beneficial because there's going to be a dedicated amount of milliamps to each individual pedal. So that's nice. So you don't end up with one pedal in the chain being a power hog and messing with the rest of them. That's fine. That's good. But take the time to flip your pedals over, read how many milliamps they want, and make sure that your power supply is up to snuff with it before declaring that a given pedal is broken or messed up. Or if you're a super nerd, you just build one. This is actually a linear type power supply. It has a big old transformer in it. It has the 12 volts for those two pedals in the back. And it actually works great on the adversary because that's got a 12AX7, so it loves 12 volts, right? And then we have 9 volts for the other ones. Some pedals want 18 volts. Some pedals want whatever. It is very possible to learn and make this circuit. It is an easy circuit if you're good with a soldering iron. But if you like pedals, get a good pedal power supply. And I mean a good one. Not a crummy Chinese one. Otherwise, you're going to be cursing. You're going to be cursing your stomp boxes and you're going to be thinking they're broken. I have gotten in three pedals for repair recently and only one of them had a minor issue that was unrelated to what the individual was experiencing. They were experiencing cutouts, volume drops, weird crackly noises. All of that stuff is related to not enough power or a crummy input jack that's not making good connection. So if you suspect that your pedal is being stupid, try putting a brand new battery in it first. See if it works good on the battery, and if it works lousy on the battery, yeah, or if it, I'm sorry, if it works properly on the battery, but lousy on your power supply, then your power supply is probably lousy. Okay, that's enough technical gubbins for me, and from me, yeah. And I'm sure this probably isn't nearly as riveting as somebody trying to explain the signal loss and whether you have buffers or non-buffers and all that. That's tone nerd kind of stuff. I'm thinking from a perspective of whether it works or not. Would I actually use all this stuff on my pedal board at the same time? Uh, no, that's pretty much insane. And I generally only use one or two at a time. And I may be using this one more and more and more. This thing's brand new. We're going to be making a few more of them. It's the angriest distortion pedal ever. I'm not sponsored by anybody else except myself. So yes, I do shamelessly promote my stuff. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.